Hi and welcome to the screencast where we're gonna upgrade our Angler to a Spinet 5 seed project from Alpha 52 to uh, Beta 0 which was released a couple of days ago. So what we have here is our uh, application running with Alpha 52 and uh, we got the change log. So let's take a look at the changes and try to update our uh, project. So first of all, let's come to package.json and get the latest versions. So we're gonna get the latest version of Angular and RxJS. Right, let's get the latest zone as well. Since I know that Angular 2 is gonna complain about not having the latest version there. Let's see that if we have the latest version of reflect metadata and we do. All right, so let's save this and then make sure that NPM restores. You never know, sometimes it fails, then we're gonna need to go to the command prompt. Let's actually do that immediately. You always need to switch to the command prompt nowadays. But although it looked like it went well here in the ID, right, cool. So if we try to build now, let's, let's actually get rid of our lib folder first. Run the libs task. Make sure that we copy the latest versions there, right? And uh, now I can see bar not installed, right? Restore package. So if we switch to the browser now and refresh, we've broken the application, right? And we are not finding Angular Angular 2 because if you take a look in the in the change uh, in the change log, we can see that Angular 2 Angular 2 was removed. So we're gonna use to, we're gonna need to change this uh, to the right barrel and get the things from core and platform browser and common and so forth. So let's switch back to our code and then our app.ts file. Let's change this up so it compiles again. Let's copy this line here. We're gonna split our imports. We're gonna get bootstrap from Angular 2 platform browser. And we're gonna get comp component and view from Angular 2 core. So we know that bootstrap lives in there. component and view can be found in the core part and let's copy paste one more line and include from common ng4 let's save looks okay for now so let's Make sure that we build the project. Does it build? Right, we're finding all the, all the correct TypeScript definition files and we can build. And let's just remove app.js. Make sure that we are transpiling. And that looks like it's working. Right, so let's switch back to the change log again. Keep on scrolling. So we have a couple of features and they've renamed a couple of bundle files that we are not using. But here we can see that angular2dev.js doesn't bundle zone.js and reflect metadata. So we can see that the new bundles don't contain zone nor reflect metadata and they can be loaded using the Angular 2 polyfills instead. So let's copy the polyfills.js file into our lib and include that instead. But just to make sure, if we come to our uh, project, to our browser and refresh, we can see that reflect metadata shim is required. But uh, instead of using that lib, let's use the polyfill. 
So we're going to switch to our gulp file. Going to add another line here to our libs folder. Let's actually copy this line up here. And what was the name of the file again? Angular 2 polyfills. Save. Let's run the libs task. Make sure that it appears. So we have our polyfills file there. Let's just include it after the shims. Save. Come back to the browser. Refresh. And we're good to go. So we can see another breaking change here is that we are running in development mode by default and we can enable prod mode uh, and in previous versions it was the other way around so we were in prod mode and we could enable developer mode so th that's actually all the breaking changes that affects our uh, seed project so now we're up at uh, beta zero and uh, i'm just going to share one more thing before i round up here uh, I noticed one thing is that it doesn't seem like we actually need to pass an ng4 to our view uh, to our view uh, annotation uh, on the directives property. It looks like we can comment that out and leave out this part as well. Save. Let's actually get rid of app.js just to make sure that we are transpiling. We can see that we are not importing ng4 and we're not passing it to the view annotation and if we switch to the browser now refresh it sure does look like we don't need to uh, pass in the ng4 directive it just works uh, and that's actually a good thing in my opinion since you probably always want to be able to use ng4 or ngf you don't want to explicitly specify that each time or important with something called core directives or core components or whatever you just want the ng4 directive to work so that's pretty cool that's i think they've listened to the community and let's see for how long that stays that way all right so that's all for now uh, have a nice weekend bye